Hey, it's Tommy Hodgins. I just want to show you a quick overview of some things that are valid CSS syntax that are a little bit tricky for something like SAS to parse because of the design choices and uh, the way that SAS is parsed versus the way that CSS is parsed as a language. So all of these examples that I will show are 100% valid CSS syntax. They can be parsed by the browser. You can look at them in the CSS object model, and you can get back a stringified representation of what the browser saw. So even though these examples look a little bit weird, I guarantee you that they are valid, and I can prove that. So that's what we'll do first. Then we'll take it over to SAS and see what happens with it. So the first thing that I'm going to do in this demo, anything I paste into this editor is going to be parsed as CSS by the browser, and then it's going to loop through each of the rules and give me the parsed CSS text that it found for the selector, the rule, all of it. And so we'll be able to see what the browser saw. So I'm going to paste in our test file. And as you can tell, uh, this comment was parsed and read and successfully dropped. It's not a rule. So these are only the rules from this style sheet. So the first thing that we have is an empty bare bones at supports feature query. There's no condition and there's no group body rule inside. This is valid, it's just empty. The second one uses the general enclosed production. So if you look in the specification, uh, you're allowed to put pretty much anything you want in the brackets there as long as there are a pair of brackets. And so this is known to be valid as well. Now here, we've put the brackets after our ident, and so it still satisfies the syntax for at supports. You're allowed to do this. Um, and so this is a way that you could write it almost like a function that takes an argument or something. Again, as long as you've got that pair of brackets, you can put quite a lot of information in there. There's a lot of flexibility in the syntax. So, so far, all of these are just testing the at supports syntax itself. Uh, this one, I don't expect to work because I don't think this one's going to work. But here is an example of CSS that is simultaneously valid CSS syntax and valid JSON syntax at the same time. So where this might be really useful is if you were, say, pre-processing a CSS style sheet with a language like JavaScript or a language that could parse JSON, and you wanted to pass information from the CSS to that other language that you're using to pre-process, uh, this would be very handy to be able to do. Now we have an empty media query, and you can tell that this is it's a valid CSS rule. There's no prelude, no condition. Uh, there's no group body rule inside, but it is successfully parsed, and it's a real thing. Here we've got a media query that has no prelude, there's no type, no condition. It's just a media query that has styles inside. It wouldn't apply by default, but this is perhaps something that JavaScript or something could come and supply this uh, prelude later or at the right times. Um, and so it, it can be very useful in the browser to have something like this to be able to be parsed and held and accessible so that's another valid thing that we have. Now here, I've got three different rules. In each one, I have declared a variable with a, a percentage inside, just 50%. And um, I'm going to try three different functions. Uh, there's an invert function, a grayscale function, and a saturate function that go with the filter property. And we are going to use the CSS variable value for the CSS variable number, which here is going to be 50%. So in CSS, this will behave as though we've got filter invert 50%, even though we have chosen to express it a little bit differently. So now that we can see that all of these rules are valid CSS, we can see that the browser can round trip them, can parse them, and stringify them back to us. Let's go ahead and pop this into SAS and see what happens. Hmm. 
So line two, it doesn't like this or something about this. If I add something in here, still doesn't like it. So it's not the group body rule. Is it this? Oh, I'd expected that, a colon. So if I add a colon, that's valid CSS. What's it complaining about? Okay, well, let's ignore this one for now and move to the next one. Line four, it's got a problem with this. It's expecting colon. If I just pop over here and put a colon in, I mean, not sure what it wants here. I mean, it wants an expression. That's strange. So let's skip that one for now. Here it's expecting the word not. Still doesn't like it. I mean, I'm pretty sure it's ugly, but I'm pretty sure that this is still a completely valid syntax. Okay, so let's skip that one for now. Surely one of these will work, right? Oh, it's looking for not again. <laughs> where, where is it looking for it? Okay, so what we've learned is that it can't really handle at supports uh, general and closed productions or just at supports conditions very well. Um, so far it's having an issue with each one of these. And we saw that they're all valid. It's looking for the word not somewhere, it's right here. Okay, so a media query, this should be pretty simple. It's just an empty rule. Um, expected identifier. Still doesn't like it. Okay. Same deal here. It doesn't like it unless I add something here. This is valid. So we'll get rid of those. So here we've got something that's very interesting. It says that my 50% is not a color. Now I know this, but I don't know why it's an error. If I pop 50% right here, it's okay. It has an issue on line 10 next. So using 50% or invert one, it's not an issue, but if I do that, all of a sudden it's saying, whoa, the number that you put in here is not a color. Same deal here. And also here. Now, for the previous ones, I believe that there are SAS functions named invert and grayscale, which may apply conditionally, but I don't believe that there's a saturate function. So I find that very curious. It's not parsing CSS functions correctly. It doesn't seem to be parsing at rules correctly. There's quite a bit of stuff, valid CSS syntax that SAS doesn't seem to be parsing as CSS. It's got some rules for what it's expecting to find, but that doesn't really match the constructs in CSS as a language. So that was Dart SAS. LibSAS gives us different error messages, but I'm pretty sure we're gonna have the same problem. Expected on line three, it doesn't like it. Problem on line five, line seven. 
line 9. Line 11. Media query expression must begin with the bracket. That doesn't seem to be the case in CSS. Must begin with a bracket. Be interesting to know where that came from. Argument color of invert color weight, 100%, must be a color on line 19. So if I change it to 50%, it's fine, even though that's not a color. But if it's a variable that resolves to 50%, wrong color. It's kind of strange. Line 21, same thing there. Ah, so this one, libsass can handle this saturate one where Dart Sass could not. So perhaps there's a difference between Live Sass and Dart Sass. Either way, there's quite a bit of valid CSS that you can't even run through Sass. Uh, it's not that it will do the wrong thing, it's that it won't even be able to parse it. You can't even process the remainder of your style sheet. It, uh, it doesn't even know what it's reading. So that's my little experiment for now. That's just what I've experimented with in a few minutes here today and found. Um, I've run into stuff like this in the past and especially with upcoming things in the new drafts, there's tons of stuff coming in CSS that obviously it's not using an invalid CSS syntax, but the problem is that um, it is something that either the preprocessor has already used for a different purpose or didn't anticipate could exist, uh, and because it's not being parsed, it doesn't seem to be parsed according to the rules of CSS, uh, it won't be able to support it. So one thing that we know is coming, um, we're starting to see browser support for it, but like this is the way of the future, is in the past when you would write you know, RGB or you'd write RGBA function with a value, um, you can see both of those are parsed and valid. Uh, in the future, what they're intending to do, and we know this, they're intending to deprecate the comma. They're considering this like a legacy thing that we don't need anymore. And in the future, they're going to be parsing just space separated values. And if you were to add a fourth one, so this parse is in Chrome at the moment, but it's not finalized in a CSS recommendation yet, but we would also be able to add things like 50% uh, instead of 0.5, uh, and we'd be able to use RGB instead of having to say RGBA. In the future, it'll just be RGB with three or four numbers separated by spaces. So we saw that that is something that is parsed by the browser. We know it's coming, and we know that that's the recommended way in the future. But there's a problem because SAS has already used RGB. They know that if you've got the commas in there, you're talking about a color, but they don't know that if you're writing something like this, that you're talking about a color. So there's plenty of things that we can expect to come in the future that I just don't know how we'll be able to use them. I don't know how you'll be able to use uh, just a normal valid CSS style sheet with some of these things like the, the newer color format and even just be able to run it through SAS. Um, but I don't have the knowledge or expertise of the inner workings of SAS to know how to fix this or where the problem is in the parsing. Um, all that I can do is see, uh, I can give valid CSS examples that I know are valid code that I can prove are parsable by the browser and not parsable by SAS. Uh, so hopefully this shines a light on where some problems may be. Hope that helped and hope you have a great day.